you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Oh my God, another one! Uh, just like I was—I've been saying for a while now to bug you to go listen to the 700 podcasts we put up. A huge year we had last year. Go listen to all those podcasts and uh, decide what you want to do for the future and all that good stuff. But yes, another podcast. Who knew it was coming? And I guarantee you, there's going to be more this year as well, <laughs> according to our schedule. So check that out. Uh, anyway, guys, we uh, have a wonderful guest on the show we'll get to here in a second. But in the meantime, if you want to watch the video version of this, there's a free service that we have right now that you can subscribe to. And it's it's for a uh, an unlimited time. So you want to just reach out and grab this way you can. You go to Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com. That's YouTube dot com forward slash Chris Voss. You see videos there. You hit the bell notification and it's free unless you actually unless they force you to pay for their stupid ad thing that skips the ads for ten dollars a month but well it's technically free it's just up to you if you want to do the upsell which i make absolutely no money well i can't say that i do make money off youtube anyway guys <laughs> enough of the youtube plug jeez he went really long today on the youtube plug what the fuck was that about uh go to <laughs> Go to goodreads.com for it says Chris Voss. You can uh, read all the books we're reviewing or reading right now and all that good stuff. You go to facebook.com, the Chris Voss show or Google the Chris Voss show. There's a bunch of groups that we have there. CES, uh, the CES group is really hot right now. Uh, or you can go to LinkedIn. We have some big groups over there as well for the Chris Voss show. Uh, today I have a most brilliant author. We only get the most brilliant authors on. We look them up on the Google machine, brilliant authors, and then we invite them and they come on the show and they tell us how to make our lives better, our world better, or uh, or sometimes they don't. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I can't think of a guest that did that. And this episode is brought to you by IFI Audio and their new Neo IDSD. The Neo is the new wave of digital sound listening for your desktop, music, gaming, and bleeding-edge Bluetooth, even MQA audio file decoding. Uh, we're using it in the studio right now. I've loved my experience with it so far. It just makes everything sound so much more richer and better and takes things to the next level. IFI Audio is an award-winning audio tech company with one aim in mind, to improve your music enjoyment of quality sound, eradicate noise, distortion, and hiss from your listening experience. Check out their new incredible lineup of DAX and audio enhancement devices at ifi-audio.com. Anyway, guys, uh, the author that we have on the show today, he's the author of the brilliant new hot book that you can take an order up. It's called One Decision, The First Step to a Better Life by Mike Bayer. Uh, Mike, I'll give you a rundown on some of his background. He's known as Coach Mike to the thousands of clients whose lives he has changed. He's a New York best-selling, or I'm sorry, New York Times best-selling author, uh, podcast host, son of speaker, and founder and CEO of Cast Centers. It's the go-to clinic for artists, athletes, executives, celebrities, and anyone who wants to live more authentic, authentically. Man, I, I definitely uh, need to go back to public school and get my uh, uh, learned grammar. Uh, so uh, he does that. He's the host of Stage 9 Productions, Always Evolving, with Coach Mike Bayer Podcast, and writes a rare column in Psychology Today. He is also an expert contributor and regular on a daytime television's number one rated show, Dr. Phil. Uh, Mike lives in Los Angeles, California, and we should welcome him to the show right now. Mike, how are you, sir? Hey, Chris. Good that uh, you give quite an intro. I tried to. I, I kind of fumbled there on often, often, <laughs> authentically. Yeah, you fumbled authentically on the word authenticity. Yeah, yeah so it's I, all good. I, there's some irony there, isn't there? So welcome to the show, uh, and congratulations on the launch of your uh, new book and stuff. Uh, it, it just came out, from my understanding. 
It did. It just uh, came out about a week ago. There you go. So give us your plugs of where people can order that book up and find out more about you on the interwebs. Yeah. So, I mean, everything I have is coachmikebayer.com. So my social media, YouTube, uh, if they want to buy the book, it's, you know, available at Target, Walmart, anywhere books are sold. Um, And then I also offer a lot of free stuff uh, that has no upsells. No upselling. Not like my YouTube style. Well, I mean, that's like low grade, right? It's (laughs) pennies. (laughs) You're not even buying a cup of coffee with that. So it's like, This just in, Coach Mike says YouTube is low grade. And I I agree with (laughs) him. So, yeah, I mean, CoachMikeBear.com is where you get all the info on everything I do. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Check it out, guys. Read up about him stuff. He's got a really cool podcast I was listening to this morning, and uh, he's got a beautiful website and how to make your life better. But uh, uh, let's talk some more about this book that people want to take in order. What motivated you want to write this book? Well, I wrote my first book two years ago, and I had no intention of ever writing a book. I never had a dream, a vision, a goal. I never had a goal of being more of a public figure. I've been a behind the scenes guy for uh, years. I've been in mental health over 18 years, ex drug addict. I own a treatment center, worked a lot in crises with, you know, people who are depressed or, you know, really psychiatric disorders and conditions, suicidal ideation, travel the world helping people. And then I like started thinking I wanted to reinvent my life, which I do every couple of years, like we all do. I was like, you know, I want to do something different. At the time, I was traveling with a lot of entertainers for years and, um, you know, from Africa to Malaysia and Australia, all over the place. And then I took a trip to Iraq, like anyone would do who's trying to find themselves, um, which they wouldn't. But that's just somehow where I ended up. And I became really passionate about helping Yazidi women, and I started going to Kurdistan, Iraq alone. Oh, wow. Um, and I thought, because I had worked with all these, you know, prominent people and uh, everyone loved Mike, right? Like, you saved my life, that like somehow I could rally everyone to get behind the cause that I was really behind. And then I quickly realized that publicists don't find Iraq very attractive. Um, <laughs> It's much better children's hospitals, uh, stuff in the United States. There's also a ton of difficulties with trying to help people in other countries. And overall, humans and people, I mean, it's hard enough to get people to help other people. You know, everyone will even talk the state of affairs, but it's like no one really helps anyone else. They just kind of bitch. And then, then when you try to get people to help people who don't even speak your same language, they, it's just, it's, it's foreign. So I realized I was like, you know what? I need to become the brand. I'm going to become the guy. I'd never had that thought before. Cause I never saw a reason to become that guy. And whether you believe in law of attraction or whatever for, I threw this charity event and that's where I met Dr. Phil. That was uh, two and a half years ago. And he asked me to go on an episode three days later. I went on an episode Um it's the number one rated daytime television yeah. show. It has a huge following. I've done, you know, I'm on today's episode. I was on Tuesday's episode and they call me coach Mike. And Dr. Phil was the one who said, coach Mike, <laughs> you need to write a book. Uh-huh. And I'm someone who was held back twice in school who didn't do well, even when they tried. And so uh, I said with everything with him, I said, yes. But in the back of my head, I was like, oh, no. I want to write a book like and I always have this idea that like people who like are writing books a lot they just have a degree of narcissism that annoys me and um like they think they're so important because they've written books and like you know we all have stories but I like I realized and that by writing books I could help more people I could do better and bigger things in the world that I want to do And I'm pretty good at it. You know, I think there's a reason I was sought after. It's not because I'm like, you know, I've worked with people who I think are way more higher functioning than me, but I've helped them make a lot of money or I've helped them live in their art. And so 
like the first book was called Best Self, and it was made New York Times a bunch and 20 languages. And this next book is called One Decision. And the reason I, I get pretty hardcore into what I create, whatever it is, is I just started thinking, I'm like, you know, like, why is it that people can't change the thing in their life that has been lingering and annoying and frustrating? Like, why, why can't they change it? Like, why does the person not lose weight if what they want to do is to lose weight? Yeah. My and problem is because, I haven't hired the divorce lawyer yet. No, I'm just what's kidding. that? <laughs> My problem is I haven't hired the divorce attorney yet. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, like the thing is, my background is dealing with really heavy issues. And so helping other people make changes that aren't that drastic is really easy. And so the philosophy behind one decision is we're all just one decision away. And what is that decision someone could make today? And and I help them do that. And so it's kind of the long story about me summed up quickly even um, but i just thought i'd give you a little background on you know who you're talking to there you go there you go we have the life history of mike there or coach mike i should say here mm. so uh did that include like an overview of the book and the details in it or do you want it, should we get into that that would be the next question we can i mean whatever you want you know what i mean like <laughs> Well, I was going to ask for dirt on my on uh, Doctor Phil, but that might be a career ender, so I don't know. He's no, you can like, ask me anything. No. I mean, I'm I'm kidding. Let's uh, let's yeah. move some books. I like Doctor Phil. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I one decision is all about uh, how do you look at life? You know, how do you look at a problem? Um, whatever the problem is. I mean, I could help you right now if you want, and we could go through the material. Uh, you probably what you probably look at me and be like, and first you need to shave that goatee down because it's a fucking shit show mess. No, I think the goatee <laughs> gives you like really good like healthy bear vibes. You know? Uh, yeah, I just I I have some bear friends and I get that from them on Facebook every now and then. they're they're wonderful friends. Um, <laughs> but, but no, this is this is more the COVID. You know, I haven't had a haircut since March by a professional uh, person, so I'm just a uh, I'm just a mess that way. I but, think you look great. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. I think I mean, people need to go on YouTube and see everything and every shade and see when the hair is growing out long and short and everything else. So that's what oh. people need to do. And they need to get that advertising money going through. <laughs> yeah, the, the 995, <laughs> which is uh, we do make a, a, you know, a couple bucks off that. So uh, you, you help people with that major decision that they need to do to flick the switch. Is Today, that correct? Yeah. I understand that, yeah. right? To make yeah. that one decision because we all have that thing like we just got done you probably helping a lot of people right now because you know we just got past that era we're still kind of in it seven days i think uh where everyone's making new year's resolutions and they want to right you know they want to make that one decision like you talk about your book yeah. where they're like you know whatever they want to do but the problem is sometimes they just never do it right yeah or they don't what i find is they don't know what to do uh-huh. and whenever there's a problem and that's why it's helpful to be guided or to work with someone is we all have blind spots. So for example, I want more to be more emotionally regulated today. I've made a decision that I want more peace today. Now I can make a decision to have more peace today, but I need to take some action. Otherwise just sitting around on the sofa, hoping that this word peace is going to go through my ears and into my brain. So, you know, like, I did a 10 minute meditation with some lady who had a really soft voice that I found on a 10% 10 happier app. And, you know, it's like you have to do, you have to take action. So the one decision is about taking actions with purpose. And what I do is I help people figure out what is that real decision that you can make today. And then obviously there's a lot of other decisions that need to take place in order to accomplish that. So, everyone's different. I write from a place of everyone authentically has their own uh, thing that they'd like to improve. I mean, Mm -hmm. life's always evolving. So uh, when we don't evolve with it, whether we're aging or what have you, eventually life catches up and it really sucks. Yeah. So might as well like incorporate like 
a little bit of personal growth. Like, I don't even know how people function without incorporating it. I'm like, how do you, you guys are, you just ride it, this man. life thing you out. You just ride it right in the ground. You just, yeah. you just ride it. Yeah. I, see, I, see, I see some people that do that, man. They're still driving the seventies van down by the river and they're just owning it, man. They're just going to die from whatever they went through in their childhood, I guess, or something. Yeah. <laughs> or bla- die blaming someone while they're driving through. Well, that's right? the most convenient thing about blaming someone else is that there's no responsibility or self actualization, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's a mentality. I mean, like, yeah, the, yeah. Like I said, like I went to Kurdistan where women's husbands were lined up and shot in front of them, and daughters traded for sex slaves, and to, out to Syria. And then, you know, I have a hard time sometimes having compassion. Um, for some of the things that people feel victim to today. Like I just, yeah, and, and based upon my experience. So like, I'm not, I'm not for everyone for sure, but yeah. I do believe I love the person that I love and that I speak to in the book is the person that's alone. The person that's gone through COVID, like they're like depressed. They have some anxiety. They feel lost. You know, they just don't, they're sick and tired of even how they're looking at their life. Like, that's my guy or gal. Like, I love someone that's like, I get to get gritty with them. You know, it's mm-hmm. the people that maybe need to, you know, to figure out if they need a, a macronutrient diet. Uh, those aren't really my people. <laughs> my feeling in life, why? I don't have a, I don't have a good keto uh, diet going on. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, no, but everyone has their thing, right? Like, yeah, I've come to cool. realize, like, I love, like, like I'm an ex meth addict, right? So yeah. I love addicts. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, where are my addicts at? And whenever I speak at corporate events, I'm always like, so you know, I do a relatability thing, and I'll often be like, and I'm an ex meth addict. Throw up your hand if you also were addicted to meth, and like, no one raises their hand. But I just find it, <laughs> I find it so funny, you know, like because it looks like I'm just like out there alone, you know. <laughs> You should do a thing where you 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 trick them, where you say, uh, "Everyone stand up," and then they stand up. Who hasn't done who who has who hasn't done meth or is doing meth? And then you know you you've caught them all standing up, and you should just pull that stunt. Yeah, that's and, a good one too. I don't know, but then maybe I don't know. Everyone would get fired, drug tested the next day by whatever employer. Uh, are you? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, might not, that might backfire. So, what are some other uh, chapters or aspects of the book that are in there? Yeah. So, I mean, we talk about, are you a victim or are you a victor mm. in your life? Mm. And um, I like that, that, that victor, victim, victor. Uh, yeah. Cause it's, right. it really is a mentality like, and it's a mentality when we blame our old boss still today, who hasn't been our boss for three months, <laughs> we're being a victim. We have mm. a mentality of being a victim. Now, we can keep creating that narrative or it's like when people are like, I'm not smart enough or I'm just not good. It's all the stuff that keeps us from growing and pushing us. I feel like everyone, I believe everyone's an artist. You just got to keep going with it. No one's perfect. And um, so I really want to help people realize and have insight. Like you said, self-actualization into like, all right, I'm, I'm being a little victim mentality. Right. And yeah, and then, you know, I also talk about a force that drives us. Um, what I find is there's a reason why people can't achieve their goals. I created what's called, like, I love an acronym. It's just easier to remember. But there's a negative force and there's a positive force. Mm-hmm. So any problem that we have, the reason we don't have it, the negative force is when the F is fortune telling. Mm-hmm. O is overgeneralizing. The R is rigidity or right fighting. Uh, C is confused purpose. And E is emotional reasoning or like, you know, well, I feel this way. Therefore, it's a fact. All that shit. I don't know. If, sorry for saying the word. No, but like do, yeah. all that stuff is like garbage in terms of like helping ourselves. And then on the other side are the hacks. So the opposite of fortune telling is fact finding, overgeneralizing is objective thinking, uh, right fighting. It's relaxed thinking confused purpose it's clarifying your purpose and emotional reasoning it's evidence-based reasoning so i i think when we get out of when we can look at the facts and in a really clear way i find that's so helpful for people i work with because they're like oh yeah that's right i 
I can do this. I'm, yeah, I am capable. Like, I do have the ability to change this, you know? So that's a big thing I get into is just like, how are you looking at life and helping people analyze their team? Like, who is on your team to help you make decisions? You know, sometimes it's really eye-opening that someone keeps, they don't realize that going to mom about parenting, even though they keep fighting with mom and looking for approval, may not be the person you should talk to about parenting. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a counselor. So I help people kind of analyze. I think assessments are really helpful. Um, And then I just, by the end of it, it's like, all right, we're very clear on uh, this one area of your life. You're motivated. You say you want to do it. Now let's get an action plan around it. So um, that's kind of the... So it's uh, the way I write, it's like there's exercises, you're underlining, you're highlighting, Mm. you're writing. It's a very interactive, uh, as if I'm, if I talk to someone through one decision as if I'm working with them as a client. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That's pretty helpful. I mean, this is a great book and great that we had you on early in the year because like people are still doing this, you know, like I'm even doing like, what are we doing this year? We've made some new agendas for guests and different things going on on the show. Yeah. And, uh, everyone's kind of using this as a reset point, especially it's how bad 2020 is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's like, okay, we, we definitely want to move on to some different places, but I like how you approach it where it's almost like hiring you as a, as a coach and, and they can spend the time and work through the exercises with you. Yeah. I think that's, I think otherwise you're writing a book like a movie and you can inspire people, but if they're not able to change, it's just, you know, doesn't, I don't know how helpful I'm being. That's my theory and my style, but not to say it doesn't work. Like Mm -hmm. there's books that sell way more than me that are all about inspiring, you know, other people. It's just, that's kind of like my, um, for now, my, what I'm into is workbook style, almost like working with someone in a very inexpensive way, um, without upselling. Yeah. And one of the things you talk about in your book is uh, giving creative guidance for discovering a path back to people in a moment when they're lost and connected. Do you feel a lot of people have to hit a bottom before they finally hire a coach and, you know, they're, 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 they finally have to hit that wall where they're like, I should fucking do something about this shit. I think people, I mean, there's two things that motivate people. It's consequences and pain. Mm -hmm. So those are the greatest motivators. Like, Oh my gosh, I went to the doctor and the doctor's telling me I need to do this or other that's, you know, or pain. Like I'm so sick and tired and I'm insufferable. I can't stand being in my body. Like I hate it. So if you have a combination of the two, that's highly motivating, but the bottom can always go lower. I mean, I always try to raise people's bottoms, try to get them, uh, you know, uh, but, but you're right. Some people, you know, they, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging for people sometimes to, uh, uh, really put attention towards something that they just don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of my favorite sayings from Dennis Miller is no one finds Christ on prom night. It's only until they fucked everybody over in this world and no one else will talk to him and they find themselves in prison and yeah. uh, you know, suddenly they find Jesus. <laughs> like Jesus yeah. is talking to me now. Well, no one else will. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I, no, exactly. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I, so I love that analogy. You know, anytime I hear something, you know, I just go, yeah, yeah, no one finds Christ on prom night. This is, this is the way it works. Yeah. But it, it is interesting to me what you say because I've always wondered that. I'm like, does does most people really have to hit that point? You know, I there were some points years ago where I, I felt so awful and I just reached a point where I started losing weight and eating vegan and, and giving up vodka and Mountain Dew that I was drinking. Um, but it, it took, it took, you know, for years, my friends would be like, Hey, he's losing weight. He's, you know, Do you remember you know, the you know. moment? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know about the exact moment, but it was like a whole week of it that I was just like bloated. And I was just like, I'm almost like one step away from a heart attack and I'm so sick of me. And but what was the moment when you were like, all right, I'm going to decide, I'm making a decision this enough's enough. Like what was, I'm not what sure. was the moment? I remember sitting in front of the TV and I was gaming and I just felt so fucking sick of everything and me and felt awful. Uh, and I said, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to change. I'm just going to go be fucking vegan. 
And uh, I thought somehow I could still be vegan and drink Mountain Dews, and that would be fine. <laughs> and that, that, cra- I love my di- I love my Coke Zeros. Yeah, and and Mountain Dews. Those are next. Mountain Mountain Dews like the sweet cake factory of sodas. Oh yeah, and I was like, well, I'm just going to cut my eating back, but I'll keep my Mountain Dew. Like I didn't. I didn't understand the math at all. I was just like, I'm sick of me. And then after a month of that and like nothing's happening, I'm like, what the fuck? And they're like, well, my friends are like, you're an idiot. You need to dump the Mountain Dew. And I'm like, oh shit, can I keep the vodka? And uh, they're like, no, no, man, you got to get rid of all that sugary shit that your body turns into sugar. Um, what I didn't know at the time was I was doing intermittent fasting. And uh, we've had the one. Uh, a fasting gentleman on a couple times uh, who's written the books. Um, but I didn't realize I was doing intermittent fasting, but I went full vegan. And uh, and then I just, I got this water machine that was a real nice reverse osmosis. And so I started doing that. And But yeah, it was, it was kind of like people just have to hit their bottom. Because like when you meet people, they were just like me. They were like, hey, you should lose weight. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get to that next week. Uh, sure, right. Buddy. Thanks Thanks for telling me something I don't... Like, people do that on my YouTube channel. They'll, like, write me and be like, you're fat. And I'm like, wow, man, I had no idea until your dumbass came along and told me that. Thanks, man. Wow. Just just the fact that you had the clairvoyance. <laughs> yeah. I, but I think, too, um, it's... Uh, what happens for some people is they think because... It, it people become very black and white with like it worked or didn't work mm-hmm. like and that's where i think even with weight loss is one of those things where like even in your situation it's like you clearly can do it you clearly have done it you're clearly not like i don't know you're like as, as i used to be <laughs> you can say well that according to you like i don't know what your background is but like the truth is it's like um but like you said, it's really helpful when you have other people who you're talking to about it. So you're not going about it alone. I think mm-hmm. the danger is for people who will not reach out for help, will not talk to others about it uh, for whatever reason. Like it is so hard to change yeah. alone. It's just so hard. So I think like, you know, and it's definitely not helpful when you have losers going on YouTube uh, being, you know, those are just haters. I really didn't know what haters were until the last six months. Like, I didn't even know. I was like, oh, really? I heard the term. I heard the term and I knew people were trolling. Yeah. But I didn't I didn't realize um, I didn't understand the personality of a hater. Yeah. Now I feel like I know, like oh, wow, they're really jealous or envious or, like, I didn't get it before. I was just like, they're a loser. Like, Yeah. They're in their mom's basement know. just, uh, you know, hating on everybody, probably in cells too, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, oh, you know, I do know one of the things that inspired me to finally break was uh, Jen Plett's, uh Penn Gillette's book uh, where he lost, like, 100 pounds. And mm-hmm. and he had hit a hit a wall because his he went into his doctor and his doctor was like we either have heart surgery on you or you're gonna lose weight you gotta get your shit together man or you're never gonna see your kids grow up and that was his that was his bottom moment where where it was like wake up and and quit fucking up and so he, it, reading his book he inspired me and there was there were some different ways that he applied uh, changing the paradigms like you you mentioned earlier the paradigms of of how I was thinking about things and 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 addressing things and like rules that I had like always finish mm-hmm. every, eat everything on your plate because my parents had taught me that. Yeah, I mean you got to relearn uh, a whole new set of. I mean, do you care about your weight now? I do, I do care about my weight, not but not as much as I should. <laughs> what do you mean? Why should you? Well, care I mean, more? clearly, clearly, I'm still overweight, so. There's clearly I don't know. I don't well I'm six five, two hundred and seventy five pounds. Well I'm, I'm a big boy. I'm six and three hundred thirty. So I got fifty on you. But Do you, you are really? three inches taller, yeah. Yeah. Wow, you're three hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah, if I sit like an angle like this, it looks like I'm thinner. <laughs> I just realized that. So, you know, I it, it it found a bottom. One thing that was interesting to me about you too was you you run uh, the Dare, I think it is, I, or I'm sorry, Cast the Cast Centers, yeah, um, which uh, helps people with addiction. And, and by the way, if you ever did want to, if you ever did want to put attention toward it, you could always come on my podcast. I'd coach you for an hour. Oh, there you so go. If you ever want to, that. Sure. that's open to you. Yeah. You can yeah. come on mine, 
free, yeah. you know, right. and I'd help you out. There you go. Uh, you know, I, I, I lost a lot of weight. I was losing three to four pounds per day because I went on pretty much, it was intermittent fasting. It really yeah. wasn't the veganism, but I, I did go full vegan and I did build a community. I went into vegan communities and learned how to eat. And what I didn't realize was though, is I was intermittent fasting. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I lost a lot of weight and then uh, somewhere I lost almost 75 pounds within three months. Wow. And I was just intermittent fasting really, but the veganism helped, but the consumption did as well. But my dog uh, had, had uh, developed uh, can- cancer and uh, we struggled with it for about a year and a half in hospice care and I took care of her. And then, uh, and then she passed and I kind of gave a little less shit and put on some weight after that and kind of where I'm at now. But, uh, so I'm probably still going to fix whatever that is, or I don't know, this, this whole year has been so depressing. So there's that. Well, listen, too. a solution in the rise in the clouds. You can come on my podcast, always evolving All right. All right. We'll do a coaching Great. session. I get, I could, I'll help you out. All right. All right. So <laughs> if you want, you don't have to, by the way, no, this happens sure. with me all the time when I go Let's on shows, I literally like just, Start getting into well. I find look, I it's uh there's no shame in any of it. And if you yeah. ever want to do it, I'll help you out. Let's do it. Let's do it. And we can trade shows. There you go. Yeah, um, that's a trade. It's but first a question trade I've ever done. For, <laughs> a question I had for you on the on the cast centers. Yeah. Um, one thing I'd heard, and I wanted to get validation of this, uh, is a lot of people that struggle with addiction and and uh, you know drugs and and everything else or whatever their addictive habit is. Um, many of them, a large percentage of them, suffered sexual trauma as a child. Is that an accurate statement or accurate figure of data that I was given? Um, well, I mean, people who are who have gone through what we call big T traumas, there's like little traumas and then kind of big T, mm-hmm. um, have a higher rate of uh, substance abuse, chemical dependency, impulsive behaviors, uh, their coping, coping. Uh, skills at a young age weren't developing. So it would make sense that then they start and with food. I mean, that's like, it's common with anything where somebody feels um, uh, lacks impulse control. So mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's high amongst different demographics too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so, um, you know, gay men are have a higher rate of addiction than men who aren't gay or, in you know, uh, so there's, a, there's all those categories of, mm-hmm. um, you know, when somebody's struggled with certain stuff, it's always yeah. a bit higher. I had, I had heard that somewhere. It was a high percentage of people that struggle with addiction. I used to watch a few rehab shows with Dr. Uh, Drew. I used yeah. to watch that show back in the day. And, uh, it was interesting to me to watch, you know, people going through struggle. I've had friends that have gone through struggle with addiction. I've never gone through addiction or had an addictive personality, but there are times where I've abused alcohol um, in my life, probably a good 10 years or so. Uh, but I had a good time. So there was that. Uh, but it, I don't know that it was good for me, my body over you know, the long term. But I had heard that and I was always kind of curious about it. I've, I've had some people on that, you know, we've talked about uh, addiction and, and uh, some of them were in the field of law where they were dealing with uh, the new sort of addiction courts where they were trying mm-hmm. not to, you know, just imprison people. Like you know, fix the problem of addiction and and different things instead of yeah, just it's throwing a, them in jail. Yeah, it's a huge addiction in general. Um, so we'll do straight mental health, uh, like clinically depressed, um, mm-hmm. and we're outpatient. So we have like partial hospitalization programs. I can tell you, since COVID hit, mm-hmm. our relapses are twice as high. I'm sure. Um, and then we have in person versus, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, all online. It's a great excuse for people not to come in, even though we're an essential Uh-oh. business. And I mean, these people haven't left their house anyways in six months, some of them. Right. Yeah. And so um, we found that completion rate has gone way down since we went, you know, with the people who went online. There's a huge push in culture where there's this belief that like telehealth is the future. It's not. Um, I'm sure they're going to put a lot of money behind it with some data suggesting that uh you know telehealth but like i like we were talking about before when you don't have a community yeah. and you're trying to change 
and you're not grabbing a coffee with someone and talking about your tough day or you're not meeting with someone in person, it's not the same. You know, yeah. it's just like if we were in the same room right now, I'd be feeling your energy, mm-hmm. You'd be feeling my energy, right? All the little social cues we would feed off of each other, right? So the same thing happens when you're wanting to make a big change in your life. And right now, we we're having we hired people from Pepperdine to do research because we're trying to convince the clients mm-hmm. that they need to show up to have a higher success rate because they're thinking oh, I just can sit on the sofa and uh, you know check in. Yeah. You know? Well, I've I've even done things like back in the day when I was a little hungover, I could get on calls. Usually, I'd be like, ah, the webcam's not working today, so we're just we'll just do this uh, consulting on audio today. And, uh, you know, I was clearly hung over and looked like I was hit by a bus much, you know, not much different than today. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I imagine if you're trying to hide from your, your therapist that, uh, maybe you've relapsed or something, there might be some, you know, it's a little hard for them to they pick that up. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah. For sure. Any of it's hard. And yeah. it's also, you know, some staff believe, believe it should be in person. Some staff don't, there's a wow. whole other you know, with employees and, you know, everyone right now because of social media is an expert, right? And yeah. so everyone listens to different experts. So you're just trying to go, okay, we're going to follow this guideline. But, you know, hopefully we're pulling out of it. And uh, um, at least where I work, we haven't been able to get the vaccine yet for mm. like, you know, the therapist. It's the interesting thing is I know some people at other institutions where it's completely online mm. and everyone got the vaccine. Oh, so wow. I was just, I'm not a little bitter. I'm very bitter. I can Anyways. Yeah. The bitterness. Yeah. Do you want to have a coaching session on that? Uh, we oh, can do trust me. I'm no show. better than anyone at all. I went, I went on Dennis Miller's podcast and he goes, first line he said to me, he was like, so why are you the guy who's worked with like, he named off a bunch of people. And I was like, I have no idea. And he, just, he was like, we're going to get along great. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Cause Did I don't, you, say, I, you know, it's, huh? Did you say Dennis Miller's podcast? Yeah. yeah the yeah, comedian? Yeah. yeah. He's got one? Yeah. Wow, I should look that up. That's a, the reference I made, No One Finds Christ on Prom Night. That is from his uh, stand-up bit. That's what you're telling? Yeah, I figured. Yeah, his, that's a reference to his joke. In fact, what's funny is I always tell people that, and he never remembers. But I didn't know he had a podcast. I thought he was Yeah, it went on just a few weeks ago. Oh, nice. I'll have to check it out. I, I was a fan of his. I mean, Jesus Christ, what he used to do at SNL. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. But... Uh, um. So and anything else in the book we haven't covered that we can entice people to go pick that baby up other than, you know, the Bureau and stuff we've covered so far? No, I'm, I mean, it's good. It's just, I, if someone wants to work on themselves and make some decisions in their life, this is a book. If you're someone that uh, wants to read fantasy, um, I love the book Swords of Shannara. So, you know, like I whatever. I read that when I was a kid. You read I'm that? Good. Yeah, I used to read the whole series, the sort of uh, Terry. Uh, yeah, it was like there was only like three, three or six books or something. It was like it was like Tolkien wannabe books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah. good though. I thought those were. Pretty I good. I loved it. Yeah, I read. I like. I, I played Magic fan. the Gathering, so anything in fantasy. Oh, do you really? My online, brother does yeah. that. That's a hell of a thing, man. Those cards sell for. Like I, I, I go with my brother. Listen, and your your brother sounds like an exceptional human being. Um, let's not push it. <laughs> he's my younger brother I got gotcha. you. Uh, and uh evidently i took all the good stuff out of the womb when i left but uh i'm all. sure he's a good person by someone's rule not uh, anyway let's not get into that wow i just segued into a whole bunch of shit uh so uh check out the book guys one decision the first step to a better life by mike bear i i really like this stuff because like i say one of the things that helped me get into it was the community of reading pendulette's book and kind of getting a vision and then finally flicking that switch and and going hey i want to do this and then and then of course i failed a couple times where like you know the first month and so i think it's real important people have uh, to work with someone like you get your book um so they can uh help lay a good foundation so they don't end up flopping around like like i've done on different things i want to take and do we all do we all do but we all get back on track and the cool thing too is i have like a whole community of people who read like i have a private facebook group so the people who read again it's free i have a free group on tuesdays i've like prided myself to my own demise on like giving away a lot besides people buying a book 
because I'm like the I'm like the opposite of what I believe a life coach is in the public setting. But like I have a if people buy the book, there's a community of other people. They get to talk about the book. They talk about their issues. So it's a whole little world we created. There you go. There you go. Uh, give us your plug so people can look you up on the interwebs, where to buy the yeah, book. Yeah, just uh, Coach Facebook Mike group, Bear. You want to do. Yeah, uh, CoachMikeBear.com. Uh, and if you – same with all my Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Coach Mike Bear, uh, podcast always evolving. And hopefully I will have you as a guest. I will gladly come on a guest uh, on your show, and we can I'm talk about – all my issues. I'm not. I I don't know how much time you have. But I'm in heaven. Be, listen, it listen, might be like something. a ten hour show. <laughs> we'll unpack it and we'll get comfortable. Well, we're re- you know what we should do is we should for for when you come on my podcast, let's wear some really comfortable clothing. Well, I think I already am, and I, I know, don't have but any I, pants I, on. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. <laughs> I'm not Jeffrey Tubin. Well, uh, thank you for having me, Chris. Thank you for being on the show. It's been wonderful to meet you and get to know you better and, and give some insight. And hopefully our audience will definitely pick up your book. I mean, this is the best time to do this, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, go grab his book, One Decision, because, uh, you know, it's the beginning of the year. We want to get 2020 on the right track and we need to give it some help. And I think we've all been through 2021. 2021 yeah see i can't even remember what year it is anymore that's how far i've lost it um but uh you know i've been joking with uh, it's kind of a half joke it's kind of just a bit i do but i've been telling people that we we need to almost have like a national mental health policy after this because i think a lot of people have really just been screwed up with what's gone you know they've mm-hmm. been locked in their homes and they're bouncing off the walls i mean some people you know the horror is just having to put up with their family members 24 7 as opposed to escaping to work so um we're all damaged beings at this point so uh, I don't know. Get as much help as you can, I guess, is the message. Yeah, there. and come to the damage party and get better. You <laughs> there, <know>? you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks to my audience for tuning in. Go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit that bell notification button. You can also go to Goodreads forward slash Chris Voss. You can also go to Facebook.com, the Chris Voss Show. There's a bunch of groups over there that just search the Chris Voss Show and also on LinkedIn as well and Instagram. I should say we're on Instagram. Uh, thanks to my audience for tuning in. Thanks for everyone for being here. We'll see you guys next time.